Your body is the future of the company. Hey guys, it's me, Ann. You're this Joe. He's the real deal. Hey, it's Justin. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Taku Toku. This time around, we're going to be talking about Season 1 of Megalobox. A little background of the show. Uh, Megalobox was actually created as an homage to the 50th anniversary Ishida Nojo, uh, which was actually authored by Iki Kachajerwara. Kach However you say that, sorry, I butchered that. Uh, and illustrated by Tetsuya Chiba. Um, so the thing I found interesting was just the fact that it wasn't illustrated and authored by the same person. Uh, I, th I thought that was really cool because the only other thing I can think of off the top of my head personally that shares that same roots um, is uh, Death Note. Because uh, that, was, that was written by two or written and drawn by two separate people. Uh, the animation and production behind Megalobox was a collaborative effort between TMS Entertainment and its subsidiary uh, 3X Cube. Uh, if you don't know what TMS Entertainment is, you know what TMS Entertainment is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like uh, they are considered the oldest uh, and most famous of all the animation production studios um, in Japan. Uh, they did a lot of American, early 90s American cartoons. You are familiar with their work, even if you don't think you are familiar with their work. Uh, I promise, I promise you this. Uh, <laughs> it actually blew my mind. I was reading about them and it's, it's, you should definitely give them a, a look at because you'll have a lot of, oh, oh, aha moments um, while reading about them. Uh, so uh, some quick facts about the show. Uh is that this show actually took five years to develop uh, and was originally uh, developed as a side story set during the original uh, Ashita no Joe, which was all scrapped during the first year. So everything that we're seeing uh, took four years to develop because it's all original. Um, so production purposely took a nostalgic approach when it came to the art. They wanted to specifically look like a VHS recording from television, which is something I noticed right away when I was watch, uh, watching it. I got these like nostalgic feelings of um, Zoids, Cowboy Bebop, uh, as well as um, Gundam. Um, a lot of asymmetry. If you look at them, there's a lot of asymmetry to it, which really adds to it. And then if you watch it, it there's like a little bit of a grain. Um, the other thing that I found very surprising was that the director, uh, Yo, Yu Moriyama, uh, this was his first time serving as a director on an anime and just in general prior to directing anything, uh, or prior to directing Megalobox, uh, he did a uh, storyboard for Death Note's first opening, which I could actually see i went back and i watched that opening of death note and i could see megalobox and a lot of similarities between that first death note and uh uh opening and then he also did key animations on episodes of gungrave uh, which is a personal favorite of mine monster which i know you actually like Anne. uh and then another personal favorite of mine desert punk uh, as well as the movie Redline. I mean, he actually did a, a little bit more uh, on Redline than just the key animation. Um, but Gungrave, Monster, and Desert Punk, he did like eight episodes per. Uh, and that's just kind of scratching the surface. It was He was looking at his, uh, his filmography. He was destined to make something uh, like Megalobox. It was just, it was in his corner. And it's, you know, as to say, since we're watching, you know, talking about unboxing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah how about you tell us a little bit about the story Ian? so the story is about junk dog who is later known as joe he competes in middle boxing which is boxing like you said but involves people wearing metal frames called gears which makes their punches much stronger and uh joe starts off fighting these underground illegal matches where he's forced to throw fights but later on he has to fight with yuri the current middle boxing champion and after he loses that match, Yuri tells Joe that if he wants a rematch, then meet him in a Megalo boxing tournament called Megalonia. But to qualify for Megalonia, Joe needs a citizenship, citizenship ID, and he also wins matches to rank up. So pretty much the whole first season is about Joe's journey again to Megalonia and the people he meets along the way. So I guess we're going to start off by just like talking about the 
the characters. So what what do you think yeah. about the main character, uh, Joe? Uh, I actually like them, which is kind of unusual for me. I don't really like main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say this uh, right now is uh, there wasn't a single character that I I disliked. Uh, it was very naturalistic uh, approach to uh, telling a story because there wasn't a villain. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, in at least not not when they introduced Yuri. I was expecting him to be like a dick or something, but he wasn't. He's like, I want you to get better, which I uh, actually enjoyed. I like that rival rivalry mm-hmm. um, uh, between the two. It was very uh, a kindred rival rivalry. Um, kind of it reminded me of the rivalry bet- uh, of uh, Char and uh, Amara from uh, original Gundam. Yeah, I like that too because, like, I feel like in most shows, when they set up like the main character's rival, they you know purposely make the rival annoying or like a like a dick just so you can root for the main character character to like kick his ass. But in this show, he, you know, you it didn't do that. Yet. Yuri's not a dick, like. He's, he's pretty chill and he actually respects uh joe like they have respect for one another and all that and, and joe yeah. he he had the i mean the kind of tackle on to what you're saying is joe he he had the perfect balance of confidence but he wasn't like goku confidence where mm. i'm gonna i'm gonna beat you i've been training years and years and years uh i'm gonna beat you um mm. kind of you know dickish pompous no humble was my problem with goku uh joe at least had a little bit you know proper balance of that yeah and he's he's also pretty i find him to be like pretty prideful like especially the part where uh yukiko try to help him out after he got hurt was almost crashing into her and he's like no nah, i don't need your help like just yeah. get away from me yeah, absolutely. And then, um, so we talked about Joe and Yuri. Uh, so there's Coach Nambu, um, who is uh, Joe's trainer. Um, and he's also got a gambling addiction. Mm. Uh, it's very obvious. <laughs> uh, there's there's Sachio. Uh, he's he's kind of, uh, I don't know what you'd call it in boxing, but he reminded me of a bat boy. You know, he, he's there. He's a... Uh, a helper he's just there to help yeah yeah but uh he does have a a niche with um technology yeah um with uh nanbu at, at first i didn't like him because i felt like he was just using joe but later on i realized he doesn't really have a choice because he's in debt to like a mob boss uh fujimaki and fujimaki is the reason why he's missing one eye and everything and later on he i would I say like nanbu kind of redeem himself because i think at one point he's like yeah i don't really care about you joe i'm just trying to pay off this debt but later on he showed that he actually does care about joe and and he t- he cares about sachio as well so i thought that's really good and then uh what's sachio <laughs> it's funny when i first introduced him and his friends his kid friends i was like oh god because like i just automatically assumed all the kids are just gonna be like annoying they're just gonna be there for like comic relief but that wasn't the case at all like Especially with Sachio, he's actually later on. He's actually pretty interesting. Like you find out that he's really good with machinery, and then, and then when you learn about his past, like it, about his parents and all that, that made it more interesting as well. Yeah, I definitely became more invested. I, I was expecting more of like an Oliver Twist kind of thing, and the kids kind of making stupid comments here and there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like we're new to this world, so that's why they introduce characters like that you know like what's this <laughs> um, i was expecting a lot of that but um uh it, it they didn't at all and i was i was I, it made me enjoy the show a little bit more um mm. uh the main villain if if you want to call him that is actually uh uh yukiko uh who uh is the head of shirado they're the ones that are putting on megalomania and she's also Yuri's manager. And I, I couldn't really tell, but there's obviously some sort of thing more than a boss employee relationship um mm. with uh between Yuri and herself. Mm. And uh but she's like 
like a boss, you know, she's like, she, she knows she can't let her emotions get in the way. So she's more of, uh, putting on a front of, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, making sure that she's all business. Mm-hmm. I thought, uh, the mob boss, Fujimaki was, if there was going to be a villain, I thought he was mostly like the villain since he, like, since all this was tri- to pay, pay, uh, the debt to him and also, he was gonna force Joe to throw the fight in Megalonia, and he even admits that, like, even after all this, after you know he throws the fight in Megalonia, he's Joe's always gonna like fight for me, so he's gonna always gonna be working under me, you know. So right. for, because of that, I thought that's why he would be the, the villain, which kind of plays into the name and the overall theme of like uh, of for Joe, like a uh, junk or before he's known as Joe's junk dog. You know, he's, he's yeah. a dog. Like he's, he's, he's to do what he's told. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was really surprised. I, there's these confrontations, but they seem so natural. And, uh, it, I was, I was ready to be like, Oh, this is, this is the enemy right here. This is the enemy. But like mm-hmm. almost everyone in the show has a piece of humanity, which is, how it actually is in real life if i mean believe it or not not everyone's a hitler uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a, a hitler or saddam you know yeah, not yeah. everyone causes genocide everyone uh it's it's kind of interesting uh put in perspective i mean everyone is the hero to their own story and yeah. from their point of view mm-hmm. and uh, i thought this with the characters, at least, it did a great job. Because just like you, if I had to choose a least favorite character, it'd probably be Nanbu or Yukiko. But that's not to say that they don't have re- have uh, redeeming qualities. Yeah, for sure. And uh, what do you think about the whole gear system they have, where they have to wear gears to like uh, fight in middle of boxing, or that's what the pretty much what people mostly do. I, I really liked it. It, uh, it re- like I said, it kind of reminded me of um, IGPX uh, oh, or yeah. uh, uh, or Zoids, where they 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 talk about them, but they don't go into detail. It's not that's not the big part of the show, and even though it's kind of like highlighted as though it is, mm-hmm. and um, I I kind of liked how we're presented it, and then they kind of talk about the different gears, but they don't go into details. They only talk about like why a certain gear is, is good when Joe is introduced to someone with it. And there's only, I think two or three different ones. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of people with unique gears, uh, uh, in terms of visuals. Um, but the ones that are actually different were Yuri's, which was an integrated one. And then Makiko, who we didn't uh, talk introduce earlier, uh, who's the brother of uh, Yukiko, um, and he wants to take over Shirato, but he's trying to win Megalomania with showing off his gear, the AI one. Yeah. Uh, so those are really the only two. The other ones, I'm, the other ones are just obvious exo- exoskeletons, which I also feel like is a really neat per uh, gives you an idea of like. It made me think that this is a future not too far away. Uh, mm. It's so to say this is like just a a standard futuristic uh, uh, setting uh, made me believe that. Uh, so yeah. I really liked it. the The gear served multiple purses uh, purposes yeah. in that sense. Yeah, it was it was interesting throughout the show to like see everyone's different gear, like what they look like and the different kinds. Like you said, like Yuri's like integrated gear. Where he's like basically like you know part of his body, and then like Mik- uh, Mikio's uh, gear about the AI, uh, where he can well oh the gear will allow him to uh, predict his opponent's moves and all that. And uh, the more and more you learn about these gears, the more impressive it is to see that Joe can actually win these fights. Because uh, going into Megalo Megalo Box and when he started to try to like go into these fights to work his way up to Megalo- Megalonia, he's uh, gearless. That's why his nickname is called Gearless Joe. He's he's going there flying with no gear against these against these opponents who are who are using gear. So when you hear about these amazing things that these gears can allow the fighters to do, like 
you know it's it's pretty it's pretty cool to see uh joe like overcome like the, these obstacles of him like not having gear and he has to work extra hard because of that yeah it's it's it just kind of shows that it's the man and not the machine hmm. uh it's kind of it, that is kind of was a big uh takeaway from the show it's i mean you can have any piece of equipment but it's the uh the individual's uh determination uh yeah. to push forward and willpower that's gonna they're the ones that are gonna be the winner it doesn't matter if they have the latest and greatest uh and uh that's kind of that's another interesting part about like the gear and like joe being gearless and mm. kind of emph- emphasizes that mm. and i think it's also because like, it's pretty i just find it pretty inspiring because like Joe being gearless, people would be like, "Oh, he's just too he's too poor to like have gear." But like, even though he's, you know, even though that's the case, he can still kick ass. Like, he can still win all these fights. I liked how that was the gimmick to like get him, uh, climb the the ladders, yeah, and yeah. it slowly became part of his identity. Yeah, uh, I, I really, I, 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 I like that. Yeah. Uh, um, because I, I've kind of had the idea that eventually he would wear some gear, which he does but then it just gets destroyed because he's just getting beaten up <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's funny because like i think I, a while back i saw a clip of the show right and it was mm-hmm. joe wearing no gear fighting against someone who has gear and i automatically assumed that uh joe was using gear just that in the middle of the fight it got destroyed and he just had to he was just forced to keep on fighting with no gear but right. then when, when then when the episode where he ha- had his pretty much his first official fight to uh work his way up to megalonia when i saw him walk out with no gear and they call him gearless i was like are you are you serious like is he really gonna do this <laughs> like no gear at all and it, it and it worked like he was able to do it and then and then and then the other way around when he walked out uh for his first match with megalonia when he walked out with gear again i was surprised i was like really like you got now you're gonna start wearing gear you know <laughs> But that was, it was very interesting seeing that. Yeah, especially it's really impressive that he did it with no gear within the time frame. So the time frame they give us is uh, he has to, in order to uh, get into Megalomania, which is only going to be four people, uh, he has to win five matches within three months. And I don't know too much about boxing. Uh, I don't watch it or anything, but I do the little bit i do know your average boxer only fights like two matches a year so to say that he's doing all that within um he's climbing these rankings within three months is impressive which is like no surprise that he was gonna end up entering megalomania um i really liked it i liked and the the crazy thing is like the show is only 13 episodes and the way that they introduce everything the pacing of it was so uh it it was just it felt so good uh because one of the things that i i I can't stand is just like each episode is going to introduce a new character which this didn't do that like uh introduces maybe like a handful of characters and you're given a little bit of background you're given the important you're given the important details about who makes that character who they are and then the the story continues on Mm -hmm. um so my favorite part is actually when after he's written won a few matches and we get introduced to aragaki so aragaki's introduction is like when i started really 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 liking it like yeah, yeah. liking that show i just i i liked it argaki is a, a soldier um who it was uh injured and lost his legs but you know during the future so he was able to recover and you're given a uh, quick insight that nambu actually taught him and nambu thought he was dead and uh, I just that whole that whole arc. It's only like I think two episodes. The yeah, arc, yeah. it's like two episodes. That I feel like is honestly the highlight of the entire series. Is like that and, and uh, just watching Aragaki like kind of dealing with his own crap 
uh, was wonderful just because it shows so many uh, splashes of humanity. Yeah. All at once. I thought it was really, really cool seeing him fight with the those leg implants. And I, what I thought was really interesting is how their fight, their fight ended. Like it, it ended with uh, Aragaki like forfeiting the match. And I thought it was interesting because I just automatically assumed all the matches in the show were just going to end with like a knockout, you know? So when I saw yes, that yeah. and it ended with a forfeit, I was like, okay, this show's different. Like it's actually going to do like other things, you know? Yeah, that was the match that really, yeah, like what you're saying. I, I was expecting, oh, Joe's going to win, Joe's going to win. But we're we're shown that because so uh, Aragaki, the whole reason he even forfeited was that his legs were about to give out. He has like these connections at his kneecaps and they're just bleeding out everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're shown that perhaps had... Aragaki not been ever been injured, he would have taken down Joe. Like yeah. that, it was it was inevitable. Joe possibly would not have won this match uh, mm-hmm. without gear, anyways. Yeah. Um. And uh, Aragaki's whole gear setup is set up for speed and not power, and uh, it just it took a toll on him. And uh, you find out that he was going to have to retire anyways, and he just wanted one last bout. Uh, and it just happened in his favor that, you know, non boo student uh, was looking. And so he kind of was like, well, if I lose, at least I'll help him kind of approach. And then if uh, there's also a little bit of a rocky moment, like because he's he says, like, I want to destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It reminded I, me of Rocky. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought at first when I introduced Aragaki and they talked about his, you know, his uh backstory and all that uh, i thought it was just gonna be a straight up villain like this is this this is the reason why he's a villain but later on you you find out that you know he's not actually a bad guy there's a reason why he wants to do this and like afterwards he even starts helping out joe getting ready for his final fight with uh year and all that so that was really cool yeah yeah that episode where it first introduced it like it sets it up to where like oh crap uh this guy has like a bone to pick and what she does but later on you find out like no you gave me a reason to live uh, <laughs> yeah which was uh pretty nice hmm. and uh throughout the show like after like you said joe had like months to win matches and get into uh, megalonia i like the parts where after every fight you just see joe like all injured like, he's all messed up to the point where he's even like pissing blood <laughs> yeah yeah i that was like actually one of my favorite details because that's the real th- you get hit in the kidneys mm-hmm. you're gonna be pissing blood and yeah. if you're if your kidneys get bruised you're gonna be pissing blood for a while mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all right let's talk about the very last fight yuri going up against joe and like how yuri actually decide to take off his gear because he wanted to be like a fair fight against Joe. So uh what did you think about that? I loved it. I I I because I want to I want to say it was during that si- fight with Aragaki that he just saw si- no no it was with I think mm, the lion dude right is like is like Boro this is, or yeah he's like this is enthralling like I I I want to uh yeah, it was it was during that fight. Um it was when Joe KO'd Burroughs. And um which is also the same episode we could see Sachio's rap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, okay, I gotta I gotta say before you continue. That rap part, that really caught me off guard. <laughs> I was like that, oh, okay, well, I guess we're doing this now. <laughs> that uh I like how he runs to the beach just to rap and then he comes back. <laughs> he comes back. Like, like for real, like I, what? Okay. Like it, like it didn't fit. It didn't make any sense as to like why that happened. He yeah. he's upset and he leaves this col this huge Coliseum and he runs all the way to the beach, starts rapping. And then he runs back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to like figure out, like they had this, like around the time where uh, Joe was getting really popular, they basically made a rap. Like someone made a rap for him, right? So, because like they they started like 
showing like all these people liking him like even a girl had a tattoo of him and they started rapping that song that that rap was like for him right like someone like or we were I, to assume that someone like did that for him i that i mean that may be the case that's not how i took it i just thought it was like a, a cool rap that just happened oh okay. the people that made it put it in there to kind of like showcase him or oh, okay. uh so, so I, I thought like someone made a rap about joe and Sachio was actually just you know singing that same rap or something like oh, that. Yeah. That's, that that's how i uh saw interpret it, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh no <laughs> <laughs> no but uh yeah to go back to yuri though um yeah i i loved it i thought i was like oh crap but he he's given he says like he's given me uh, a, a purpose he's he's made me uh realize like there's more to this than just the gear and he decides to get it cut off yeah. and which um mikio's brother does for him and so the by the time you see it he's like has this badass scar all over his body yeah, because yeah I, I already did like this scar look yeah it was really cool. so the the thing so there's a recovery period uh after he gets his uh it took it off the thing that really confused me was uh was like yuri thrashing around and so i i don't know like to the extent as to how the integrated gear was attached i'm so i'm assuming maybe it was a nerve ending mm -hmm. and that's why he was screaming because he was like throwing himself against the walls and stuff and all i can think of was like what that is make it hurt worse like mm -hmm. what <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh i've uh i've i've had some things happen to me personally and you put any sort of pressure on it and just it's gonna hurt even worse so mm -hmm. <laughs> he just he's just like i just remember him he literally throws himself against the wall i was like god dang <laughs> and then and then it cuts to him and so this is the so it cuts to him and you see this the scene there's like lightning in his body and mm -hmm. he's like becomes a black figure and there's lightning so i assume that's why the uh, it must have been nerves. It must have been like way, way, way more complicated of a procedure than than it just laying on top of them, which would make sense, right? Because it, essentially it becomes like a part of his skin, and I'd assume that they'd have to do something with the nerve so he could at least feel uh, if someone were to touch him where the integrated gear was. Mm -hmm. I, I i with the with yuri taking off his gear i kind of had mixed feelings about that because at first i was like okay i think it's pretty cool that once yuri takes off his gear and like you know the, all the scenes you see him try to recover and all that was pretty cool and he has like those cool scars after he takes them off they're gonna have a, he's gonna have a fair, fair fight with joe but then i was like i kind of want to see what would happen if he actually kept that gear on and see how the fight would turn out i feel like maybe joe would have lost or something but i thought it would be it'd be interesting to see what would happen and i think and also another reason why i want to wanted to keep that gear on was because uh i think the whole reason why Sachio wanted to be with joe and nanbu was because like uh the backstory of Sachio was that his father worked on the prototype of uh yuri's gear and like i think shirato like kind of stole that research and everything and after it's like you know uh, the Sachio's dad like uh died and so like if joe were to like defeat yuri even though yuri had the gear on it would be kind of like a f you <laughs> to that to Sh shirato in a way that's that's how i took it all right like, i, I kind of figured that that hostility was removed after uh nanbu uh left sachio yeah. and uh yukiko's care yeah yeah, yeah. um and because you kind of find out later on, there's there's something weird going on there. And, and, and all honestly, I kind mm. of tuned that part of the show out, like it, the whole corporate. I was more uh, uh, kind of swept up in the um, uh, Joe's climb. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's, that's, and, that's understandable. <laughs> I'm trying to get to this final battle. Um, mm. my, I think one of my favorite parts, though, in that final like showdown was... Uh, 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 Sachio kind of going over to Yuri's uh, corner because he has no one left. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess uh, as soon as he took off the integrated gear, he's no longer part of uh, uh, that company that sponsored him anymore. Mm -hmm. 
And so he doesn't have a team. Um, so he goes over there and just says, get picks up the water bottle because he can't he can't bend over, sit down because he's going to collapse. Or at least that's what we're led to think uh, uh, as that's what Joe's thinking. Yeah. And um, and he just picks it up and says, I don't want you. To, I don't want if you lose, I don't want you to have a reason to complain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that part, too. <laughs> I thought that was real. I thought that was really uh, clever. Uh, that sounds like something a, a a kid who's like who's been kind of down and out before would say. Yeah. Uh, but actually, so my favorite thing I know you didn't like it. I actually liked it was the fade out. Mm. Uh, between the final punches. Um, and I I really liked it. I I kind of figured that we would see the results. I just don't think that we would have saw the the uh the actual final punches yeah um and i liked where they were a year later i i absolutely loved it mm. um what seeing uh their gym open up nambu has opened up a new gym um there's a new megalomania uh but we see yuri in a wheelchair which is already a precursor as like oh joe won uh mm. and <laughs> joe is delivering some uh little baby gear for uh, <laughs> yeah. to the gym, I, yeah. I I loved every moment of that uh, yeah. of that that scene. So if they didn't weren't to have a season two, uh, I'd be really content with that ending. Yeah, yeah, same. The, the reason why I was kind of bothered by, about not seeing the ending of that match was because like, you know, the whole show, the whole point of the show was Joe working his way up to fight Yuri, and it had that match within the Megalonia, so. I thought it'd be cool to see that actually see that whole entire match and see like, you know, they announced Joe as the winner and then seeing Joe's reaction and everyone's reaction. Cause like a lot of people were watching that match. Like even like the Fujimaki mob boss guy was watching it. Like the mechanic guy that Joe likes to go to who's watching it. Like I wanted to see like everyone's reaction to Joe winning. So when they had that fade out and cut, you know, fast forward to one year later, I was like, Oh, that kind of sucks. But other than that, like like you said, the whole thing, seeing them one year later and seeing the gym opening up and seeing Yuri and Joe just chilling, talking to talking to each other, I thought that was really cool. Like I was, I was, I thought that was pretty cool as well. I so the thing, I, the reason I liked it um, was after uh, it stated that Joe won because a little uh, it fades to black again and a, a a card kind of pops up saying Joe won. Yeah, and um. Uh, by KO, I could I could visually all those characters, everything you just described, I could see in my head, like mm. everyone cheering and stuff. And I was just kind of glad that it cut that stuff out, because I mean, like, I don't need 15, 10 minutes of that. I already know, like what's you already know what's going through everyone's head. We've all seen an underdog story before that's mm. in every underdog story movie. Um and where it takes like 10, 15 minutes, the guy's hugging everyone. People are holding him up. It cuts to like everyone that was listening on the edge of their chair, their chairs or shouting and jumping for joy. And we had already gotten that as well. When, uh, Joe, uh, beats, uh, I think who, what was his name? Mikio, yeah. uh, to enter Megalomania. We got like a taste of that. So I, I was, it was easy for me to like visualize it in my head. Mm, I get you. Especially since it fades out at that last punch, I kind of assume that Joe's punch kind of knocked him out and uh, Yuri out since he's like <laughs> he was on the cusp any of ways of passing out. Yeah. Oh, so after seeing all that, uh, what do you think about the show overall? I loved it. I would recommend everyone to watch it, especially uh, if you're a fan of, like I said, those early tsunami animes from like the 2000 early 2000s like trigun cowboy mm. bebop sp- especially if you're a fan of cowboy bebop you'll you'll like this because it's a very similar pacing very similar dynamics another one that i i, I reminded me of was uh the zoids the one with um uh liger zero that second series where it's a tournament mm. um and uh and also old school gundam just that really that rival rivalry uh really 
cemented it for me just because it wasn't like uh one sided. It wasn't yeah, yeah. feel one sided. Um kinda like uh some other animes uh do. What about mm-hmm. yourself? <laughs> I, I, I really like that as well. Um I going in like I before I watched this I watched uh what was it called? How do you know Ipo, that other boxing anime? So I was, oh, yeah. I was already into like animes about boxing. So watching this it was pretty much the same as that where they had like you know the fights and they had the in betweens with them training and seeing their lives and you know seeing them socializing and then going to another fight and all that and it was a bit more interesting uh in in the show to like see him wearing gears and like all that the whole setup with everyone having their gear and like, and Joe being gearless and all that and seeing like, how the fights play out and how they portray the fights uh it was, it was really cool and the music was really nice the look of it was nice like you said um overall i think there's a really good show and i'm looking forward to seeing what happens in season two because i know it's gonna get pretty fucking dark <laughs> it's pretty much oh, yeah. like it's gonna take the last episode of the show of the season be like oh everything's happy and the second season starts and they're just gonna sh- completely shit all over it <laughs> so i'm gonna I'm, I'm waiting to see that one of the few things i saw right away after watching this was like a still from the second season and you just see uh joe with a beard and i thought to myself oh this is fucking dark (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh guys thanks for thank you for listening to our discussion um if you watch the show tell us what you think in the comments and all that and make sure you like the video and everything and uh we'll see y'all later take care everyone Bye.